it has been at least half a year since I started creating what I later named the Fantastical Unicorn Mech. The project has finally entered the ending phase where I'm able to take the model, put it in the rendering software, apply all the textures, render it, and call it finish. Making the Fantastical Unicorn Mech has been a really interesting project for me. It is one of my longest projects and the only one I've finished to date. A lot of things had happened along the way and I wanted to record this for both future use and a good laugh. This type of video serves as a reference for me, but if any one of you watching find the things I said interesting, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. I will be talking about my ideation and the general stylistic references that went into sculpting and texturing. We'll then be moving on to talk about my workflow and the things I learned along the way. There are a lot of things I realized that could work for me looking back, but during the time I have no idea of what things are and how they work. There are a lot of things that happen during the making process. Some of them you can probably catch in the time lapse videos. Quite a bit of them I find funny. I don't have the best memory, so a lot of the things that happened towards the earlier stages were just simply forgotten. Last of all, I'll be giving my thoughts on my final piece and the things I need to learn more about moving forward. I'll be giving my thoughts on what I could have done better and pre-existing weaknesses that impacted the final product based on my understanding of myself. The prompt I was given was hard surface model. At the time, I don't have a good idea of what hard surface modeling is. Or in other words, I thought hard surface only was things that fall under the modern tech firearms or sci-fi. I have no confidence in modeling any of them. As a result, I firmly believe I couldn't do anything. Because of this, I reached out to my professor asking how I can approach this prompt. I received the answer of something along the lines of hard surface modeling means that you're modeling something with a hard surface. That was a huge relief for me because most of what I did in ZBrush was for CAD for jewelry. So the final products in that pipeline were only rendered in metal. If you need a digital render that is, meeting whatever I did in the past is to an extent hard surface already. So with that out of the way, I decided to design a unicorn because I have an obsession with unicorns. I took some of the ideas I like from past projects and put them together to form the base design for the unicorn mech. My last project was the Magic Cannon. That was also on the channel if anyone's curious. I really like the structure of the piece overall, so I wanted to do something similar. The form was inspired by the anime fairy tale and some other animes that utilize stacked magic circles to convey power. This type of expression became the foundation for my magic cannon designs and also contributed heavily to my understanding of what makes things magical. The humanoid aspect of the model was based on another design that I have been slowly chipping away on. The Golem series is an ongoing project that's based on the concept of creating a master form where every component could be taken apart and made into a piece of jewelry. The other Golem, named Golem 1, was the first design for my Golem series that inspired Unicorn Mech. It started out as a way to utilize my more sculptural jewelry designs. I then took it a step further to try and bring the game aspect into the design. The final result was just a bunch of floating jeweler pieces that looked like a human. The unicorn was designed on the same ground as the ladder but with a tighter composition. I don't have a proper reference sheet for this project, but I am aware of what I'm inspired by. In terms of form, the unicorn mech is a combination of medieval European armor, fantasy armor, and the human skeleton. When it comes to pattern, I look at antique furniture, Nordic woodworking, and medieval manuscripts. For bird and feather patterns, I reference Chinese porcelain. The ones that I remember the best were the ones they used to export during the Ming Dynasty. Aside from all of this, I threw in occasional sci-fi elements to try and make it a bit more standard hard surface. 
There are two instances where the model was supposed to be symmetrical, but due to some mishaps, that did not happen. The first major one happened when one of the rings was transferred over to ZBrush to be sculpted. It was either something wrong with the symmetry settings or something wrong with the low poly. After looking at it for a bit, I settled on the idea of just rolling with it and making the ring asymmetrical. The same thing happened when texturing, but that one was a bit more expected. Unlike what happened in ZBrush, I didn't notice the asymmetry until well into the texturing process, but I was able to adjust to that fairly quickly. Like mentioned before, I did not realize the relationship between high poly and low poly until later. Therefore, during the entire sculpting process, I didn't zero mesh or dynamesh because I know they would recalculate all the polygons and I would lose the UV model. But after that, I realized that was not the way stuff calculated when baking high poly onto the low poly. In other words, the high poly doesn't have to be UV for it to bake. The action handle on the Canon wasn't retopologized properly when I first imported it to Maya to do the UV. There were holes and the ends of the few spikes were missing. I took the piece back into Topogun to patch up the low poly, then took it to ZBrush to array it a second time. That component was the one I was the most upset about, but I have no idea how to optimize it. And it was with that particular piece I realized hand retopologizing spike basically depression. After patching up everything, I misstep while doing the UVs, resulting in a slight difference in the quad. This made me unable to stack the UVs because the mesh is different, I couldn't use Maya to transfer attributes and use a set of shells for all four pieces. As an extension to the spike torture, I figured out filigree-esque forms and wires just weren't the best when it comes to retopology. One thing that I have the tendency to do is not look over the UV maps properly resulting in me having to open up Maya and tweak the maps while I'm texturing. During the time lapse, you can see me re-importing the maps and substance recalculating everything multiple times. I still have no idea what happened when I was rendering the canon and why the map ended up being the way it did. There was this moment when I imported everything into Marmoset to render, only to have one of the maps being paler than usual. Even though I'm expecting the results to be different in Marmoset and substance, I'm still surprised by what happened. I did some troubleshooting only to give up after a bit. I turned the metallic map off and just rendered everything like that. When texturing the fingers, I forgot to move all the UV shells down onto the UV plane before texturing, resulting in me having to go to Maya and move everything down again, then re-import the entire model. And after that, I found out one of the finger joints wasn't scaled properly, hence the super pixelated bake. I thought it was a baking issue at first, so there is footage of me baking it the second time. Later I realized it was a size issue, but wasn't sure about re-importing. As shown in the footage, there was one attempt in re-importing and you can see all the textures vanishing. There are two attempts to try and fix this issue. The first fix moved a lot of UV shells to make sure the size is right. I then re-imported everything, watched all the textures vanish, panicked, did a second fix. The second fix only moved the parts that I will not be adding the patterns onto. I then rebaked everything and the scaling issue was fixed. It was then I saw that Substance was able to adjust the previous map to the current one. I'm not sure how far the pre-existing textures can move, so after the first re-import, I reloaded my save instead of waiting for Substance in fear of losing my progress. Aside from the finger segments, there are a lot of attempts in trying to bake the tail segments as well. At the end, the final bake was completed by ticking off a lot of the checks they have in the baking menu. I don't remember specifically which ones were turned off, but I don't have the AO map at the end. I had one high poly that was only one segment, but that didn't bake properly. Then I made a second high poly that was the entire tail. But that resulted in a lot of fiddling around to make sure the bake is somewhat clean and the textures don't overlap. And last of all, I did not notice this until I am rendering the turntable for the leg section. There was smear on the knee because my pen slipped when texturing the leg. I didn't notice it until later and it was until the final render where I posed everything when I finally took that out. But the first iteration that I posted on ArtStation had that smear on it because I didn't realize that. I forgot to take it out until I, I'm done with everything. But there's a good thing when it comes to messing around with the textures in Marmoset is that I realized that 
through the hard way. Marmoset reads the maps by the name, which meant that if I moved the last batch of maps into a different folder and then re-imported another batch into the same folder, Marmoset would automatically swap the old textures out for the new one because the old one isn't there anymore and they read all the files by the name. So basically, if you just make sure all the names are the same, you're all set. <laughs> Now that we've gone over most of the stuff that happened over the course of a few months, we are at the point where we have our ending thoughts. And basically my thoughts on the final outcome of the Fantastical Unicorn Mac. Long story short, I'm just glad I'm finished with one iteration of this model. It has been a while since I started this prompt. Progress hasn't been consistent and there were a lot of times I found myself caught up on details I don't necessarily need. Overall, I'm not too satisfied with my time management skills when it comes to balancing between different projects. Towards the end, I have a lot of new ideas I want to experiment with, but I need to finish this unicorn first. I feel like I could have done better with that aspect, especially considering the fact that I should have built up a scope of how much time I would need after I finish the upper body. I enjoyed the process and I can see the effects of working with things like this on my other projects. I'm sure I work faster, but I'm not sure how much my software knowledge grew. From my own point of view, I'm still using the basics to do everything I did across all the tools I used. There are moments where I would be thinking it would be great if I can make this into a brush, or I have a good idea but I don't know how to make it into mask and substance. Aside from some back-end self-interrogation on my skill set, I'm seeing things I know I'm not good at impact my end product. Color has always been a weak link in everything I do and it got progressively worse since I started to learn how to make jewelry. Everything became metallic and needs to be of resemblance to metal for me to make sense of it. Unicorn Meg has a small color palette of 3 to 4 colors. The base color being deep gold or my image of slightly oxidate bronze with a bright beige color as the main accent. The other accent colors being purple and green, colors I use for my own avatar. Respectively, I introduced silver as well thinking it would be a nice addition, which became a wild card towards the end. I don't know what I should feel about that material, it works but it doesn't as well. Relatively speaking, I am better at form. But one main thing I realized during posing is that modeling in an A pose makes a lot of things harder. I do think that it has to do with how I design everything and there were just too many floating parts. I have to redo the pivot for everything, group everything so I can pose things properly, even though I should have done that prior to posing, but it it is what it is. I don't know how to rig, so I have no idea what it would be like if the model was rigged. After all the hassle with posing, the final result was pretty satisfying. It's a fairly funny pose that is reasonably dynamic. Some views were definitely better than others, but there weren't a lot of dead spots. Am I happy with the piece? I don't know. I'm just glad I wrapped up and is able to move on to the next project. Now, on to the final breakdown of all the time I spent on this project. For the zebra section, which I divided into three checkpoints, every checkpoint corresponds to one episode I uploaded. For checkpoint 1, the head, body, shoulder, and the legs took 20 hours not counting the hours in Maya. Checkpoint 2, a large portion of the arms including the cannon and the bones took 18 hours. Checkpoint 3, I completed the model with 8 hours added to the clock. That makes up a total of 46 hours plus a few more extra for poly modeling and UV. For the topo gun section, I'll be adding on time based on episode number. For episode 1, I spent 20 hours, episode 1.5, 14 hours, episode 2, 6 hours. That makes up a total of 40 hours, excluding time for UVs and for the parts I read to apologize off camera. For the final texturing section, which I divide with episodes, I spent 9 hours on the head, 13 hours for the body, 12 hours for the upper arm, 5.5 hours on the leg. 10 hours on the cannon, and 14 hours on the hands and other miscellaneous parts. This adds up to a grand total of a minimum of 63.5 hours. Over the course of around half a year, I spent at least 150 hours because I didn't record my th time on things like UV troubleshooting and rendering on the Fantastical Unicorn Mac, and the final model has a grand total of 85k faces.
The Unicorn Meg progress updates make up most of the content I have been uploading ever since I started posting videos to my channel. Currently, I have two unfinished projects that was started on this channel already. However, I will not be working on them for the next video. I will be starting a new series and that will be the next main thing I will be focusing on. Aside from this, there are other things I want to try out. I've seen people posting daily models on art stations. This is something I want to try, especially after discovering Make 3D. I also have a stash of sketches that I have accumulated over the last few years I wanted to sculpt. This could also be a form of daily challenge considering the fact that you don't need a low poly for jewelry. Last of all, I would like to thank all the people that liked, shared, and subscribed to the channel. I'm surprised I made it as far as I did, so thanks to all of you who decided to stick around.